Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining me for tonight's concert. And the theme for this evening's performance is Songs That Made the Flappers Cry. I've never done this before. I'm really excited about it. And uh, actually, I owe a friend of mine, I saw that he's watching already, uh, Ken Johnston from Australia. Uh, I owe him for the idea. And uh, I don't think I've ever done a whole concert devoted to ballads and waltzes and things like that. So this will be a little bit new for me, but I, I certainly know lots of songs like that, and I hope you all love it. And I hope it doesn't put you completely to sleep. Of course, I'm happy to take requests. And uh, hey there, stage door, Johnny in Sydney, Australia. Hmm. Looked like the stream cut out there for a second. I'm still working on... Uh, technical aspects here of my concerts, folks. But let me start out with a couple of songs that maybe you've never heard before. These are really beautiful waltzes of the 1920s. And um, here's the original sheet music. There's a new star in heaven tonight, Rudolph Valentino, uh, which was written about Valentino, the silent film star when he died, and they needed a songbird in heaven. So God took Caruso away. They're kind of similar songs about two big stars who died in the 1920s. And I'm, I'm going to play the Caruso song first, actually. And then we'll do There's a New Star in Heaven Tonight, Rudolph Valentino. Thank you. 
you very much, everybody. Hey, Ted, great to have you tuned in. Hi there to Harry Traxler. Oh, glad to have everybody back. Looks like the stream's working all right. It's such a technical thing. Uh, you know, I, I, I am not a computer wizard. I'm also not a marketing expert. <laughs> And I wish those are some of the things they actually taught me in music school, you know. But uh, anyhow, uh, those two songs open the album that Johnny Maddox recorded called Songs That Made the Flappers Cry. And that's really where most of the inspiration for this concert comes from. I don't uh, mean to talk about Johnny uh, just constantly, but it's a wonderful idea. And uh, that's how I learned a lot of the songs was through him, of course. He's one of the famed pianists that did uh, old American standards and ragtime. And uh, uh, I'll tell you a bit about the original history of the songs, of course. I'll try and stick to that. And um, here's, here's two songs. Uh, a lot of these songs, since I don't sing especially, I like to do them as medleys. And so here's two from the 20s. And here's the original copy of one of them, Baby Your Mother like she babied you back in your baby days. <laughs> they don't write them like that anymore. <laughs> uh, music by Joe Burke, who's a pretty well-known songwriter. I'm trying to think of what his biggest hit was. It's escaping me at the moment. And um, with it, another, another popular song of the mid-twenties called Tie Me to Your Apron Strings Again. Uh, I've played that one for quite a while. They're very sentimental songs. Uh, they are uh, described here on the original music as foxtrots, and that was the most popular dance for decades. I think that term really was used very generically for almost any type of song in duple meter. And uh, we're going to do Baby Your Mother and Tie Me to Your Apron Strings Again, both of which were recorded in the 20s by Ford and Glenn, a very big radio team. Uh, and their most famous song was I Get the Blues When It Rains. But I'll tell you more about them later. For now, here's these two tunes. <laughs>
thank you very much. Tie me to your apron strings again, and baby your mother like she babied you. Back in your baby days. <laughs> well, uh, I'll, I certainly will do some up-tempo songs tonight, too. Maybe you could uh, look for some of those when you're sending in the requests, folks. Appreciate that. I've got Tony on um, YouTube asking for Ramona. I will do that later in the program. I'll definitely do Ramona. That's the type of songs we're doing tonight. Let me check Facebook here. Hey to Jerry and Mary Grace in Kansas City. Oh, Andy, so glad you're tuned in tonight. I bet you hear some songs you've never heard. And Judy in New Mexico. All right. Uh, let me do a couple of the more famous songs that I'm planning tonight. Uh, both waltzes written uh, by the same two men, Erno Rappi, or Rappé, he was a band leader, and Lou Pollock. And... Um, Here's the cover of one of them. This is called Charmaine. And it's a beautiful waltz. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is Diane. Oh, man. Diane, I'm in heaven when I see you smile. And then the other one I'm going to do is Charmaine. Um, this was written for an early talking picture called Seventh Heaven. I've never seen the movie, but it's a, an incredible song that's uh, lived on for years and years. And we'll start with Diane, complete with the verse, and then go right into Charmaine. And what I'll do with Charmaine at the very end is transform it from a waltz into a foxtrot. And that was a very common thing to do. Uh, take a waltz and play it both in three-quarter time and as a foxtrot in the 1920s, especially in the late 20s and early 30s. So here's Diane and Charmaine. Thank you. 
thank you so much, Charmaine and Diane. I forgot that if Mike and Penny Schwartz were tuned in tonight, I was going to dedicate Diane to her. Uh, maybe they'll still see this uh, because Penny's real name is Diane. I don't know if anybody knows that, but uh, it's Diane Penny Schwartz, and uh, sometimes I play Pennies from Heaven for her too, but <laughs> I thought Diane is, is a good one. And um, yeah, just in case you're tuning in for the first time, I, I do accept virtual tips for these concerts. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's kind of what's kept me going and still is throughout this COVID business. And uh, I have both PayPal and Venmo in the postings, and there's even a P.O. box on my website. No, doesn't look like I know the requests coming in here. Um, I want to play a very special song for you. As I mentioned, much of this concert tonight uh, was inspired by this album that Johnny Maddox did. Uh, it was called Songs That Made the Flappers Cry. In fact, he did it with violin and cello obbligato, which is just gorgeous. Unfortunately, I don't have a violin and cello here, no, nor do I know how to play them. Um, and he recorded this album in the 70s, and it was never released. And then not long before he, he retired, they released it on CD. And I'm so glad they did. And uh, he was so inspired by it that he got up at the age of 80 or something, 80 something, and went to Nashville and recorded another album in the same style with violin and cello and did a whole bunch more waltzes and ballads that he didn't do on the first album. That one is called Kisses. And on that uh, recording, he did a song that I would not know about if it wasn't for Johnny. This is a, a really sentimental ballad called Lonesome, That's All. And uh, let's see, it dates from 1918, I believe. It goes way back. And here's the original copy of it. I don't know that you can see through, this, through my iPhone, but this is a very special copy of the music because it has three signatures on it. <laughs> It has Josephine, who must be the old lady that originally bought this about 1918 when the song came out. Up here, in bigger print, is John S. Maddox Jr. That's Johnny Maddox. This was his copy. And in tiny print over here, it says, sincerely, Ben J. Bradley. Well, that was the composer of the song who was Johnny's piano tuner uh, when he was a young man, probably in the 1940s. And he had Ben Bradley autograph the song. So I thought I'd pull that out to show you the music. Ben Bradley's name is on it, but in bigger print it says Lee S. Roberts, who was a famous piano roll artist. Ben Bradley told Johnny that Lee S. Roberts didn't have anything to do with writing the song and that it was all him. He just put his name on it to get it published. And uh, uh, the song lived on for years and years. In fact, here's a later printing of it with Rudy Valley on the cover. In fact, mine is signed by Rudy Valley. And uh, I'll play it off of this one tonight. I don't want to use the original copy. <laughs> Lonesome, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. 
lonesome, that's all. Thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoy the anecdotes. Yes, thanks to the person on YouTube who was commenting on that. I, I had one person comment on one of the old live streams a couple of weeks ago. You talk too much. I suppose there could be some truth to that. <laughs> oh, well. Let's see. What else am I going to play tonight? Incidentally, uh, if you enjoy this music or if you know anybody else that you think would like it, please share this live stream and also hit the like button on both YouTube and Facebook uh, because it helps the algorithms on social media. I really appreciate that, folks. And let me tell you about uh, another songwriter who was a, a close friend of Johnny Maddox, and I've played some of his music before. For many of you, I'm sure, his name is Glenn Rowell. It was part of Ford and Glenn, the famous harmony team in the 20s. They were big stars on the radio. And uh, a lot of the songs that Glenn wrote were very sentimental. And I'll play two for you now as a little medley, two waltzes. And uh, the first one, I, I believe, was Glenn's first song, which came out in 1923. And it's called School Day Sweethearts. And uh, for some reason... I, I never, uh, I could never figure out why on the music Glenn used a pseudonym instead of Glenn Rowell. It says Glenn Edwards. And it finally hit me that uh, it was a play on Gus Edwards who wrote the famous song School Days. School Days, School Days, Dear Old Golden Rule Days. So that's what it's about. It's, it's a play on that. This is School Day Sweethearts. And, um, and then we'll follow it up with I Wish You Were Jealous of Me. Played as both a uh, foxtrot and a waltz, which again was a very common thing in those days. So here's two songs by the wonderful Glenn Rowell. <laughs>
so much. I wish you were jealous of me and the school day sweethearts. Oh, thank you, Don. He says, I just tipped the pianist at this fancy supper club. Oh, Alex, Alex Cooper, so, so flattered that you still tune into my concerts. We should chat again before too long. Thanks so much for listening. Oh, well, uh, let's see. Stephen uh, was asking about some Al Jolson songs, and uh, I should do some up-tempo numbers tonight just to break the monotony. And uh, I had a lady that, new friend of mine, Patty, that asked me to play California Here I Come last week. I never got around to it. So let me do that for you now. And uh, this was introduced by Al Jolson in 1924. And with it, uh, the other most famous California song, San Francisco, from the movie of the same name. Come, thank you, folks. Shoo. Guess I'm just getting warmed up for the night. Uh, I saw multiple requests for Swanee. Um, that really does not fit the theme for the concert tonight at all. And I mean, I might play it for you anyway, but I'll tell you why I won't. It's because next week I'm finally going to do my George Gershwin tribute. So that will naturally be on next week's program. And uh, I'm very excited about that. I've been planning it for probably a couple of months now. I'm having my piano tunes tomorrow, actually. And so it should be in great shape for next weekend, and I'll be, I'll be doing uh, a, whole, a lot about Gershwin's early career all the way to Rhapsody in Blues. So I hope all of you will tune in next week for that, next Sunday night. Uh, but for now, let's get back to the ballads and waltzes. In fact, play you, these might be my favorite on the program tonight. Uh, these are extremely beautiful, sentimental ballads, 
in fact, these two might be the most sad songs on the program tonight. Uh, I'm going to start with a song that was a huge hit for the early country singer Vernon Dalhart. It's called The Prisoner's Song. And uh, the record collector Joe Bizarre told me that uh, The Prisoner's Song sold millions of copies uh, several years before Gene Austin's My Blue Heaven. That record is known as the first million seller, but I'm sure Joe is right, to be honest with you. Uh, I bet that The Prisoner's Song sold millions. It was so popular. It's a very simple song, only three chords. There's not much to it. Um, Johnny played it as a waltz. Uh, I'm not sure that that's quite right, but I'll do it as a waltz, and then guess what? As a foxtrot, too. <laughs> and I'll, f I'll follow up The Prisoner's Song immediately with this tune which is called Lay My Head Beneath a Rose. And it's quite sad. It's a true story about a man who died and wrote his sweetheart a letter and said, let my final resting place be near you and lay my head beneath a rose. And um, I was just reading on the back of the original music. There's, there's the whole story about the song. And this was recorded by a man named Maurice Gunsky, Maurice J. Gunsky, who sang ballads and uh, you might call them salon songs in the 1920s. Uh, I love his voice. It's not too sappy for me at all. So we'll do uh, Lay My Head Beneath a Rose. Uh, but first, the Prisoner's Song. And uh, that song's special to me, too, because my grandfather Dick, Dick King, knew that song from when he was little. Oh, I didn't know uh, Vernon Dalhart did the Valentino song. How neat. Okay. Anyway. Here's a medley of these two, The Prisoner's Song and Lay My Head Beneath a Rose. Thank you. 
Thank you, folks. Lay my head beneath a rose. That's, that's in tribute in part to Maurice J. Gunsky. I have an autographed picture of him that Johnny gave me hanging on my wall. I bet very few other people do. <laughs> he also uh, had a big record on a song called Consolation, which is beautiful. I could play that, too. I, I don't have it out tonight. But uh, um, somebody asked me for Ramona. Maybe I should go ahead and play that. If you're still listening, you've got to do it while you're, while you're online, folks. Now let me do a little bit more famous song for you. Uh, well, I was going to do Ramona. No, let, let me do this one first. Let's do My Blue Heaven. And I already mentioned that. It was a big hit for Gene Austin. And with it, I'm going to do another Glenn Ryle song. This, uh, this one came out in 1931, I believe. Yep. And uh, it's kind of funny. Johnny said that uh, Glenn got so tired of playing My Blue Heaven over and over that he took a bit of the melody and turned it upside down. And that's how he wrote What More Can I Do? There's a picture of Glenn and uh, his radio partner, Gene Carroll, on the cover. So I made a little medley out of the two songs. We'll do My Blue Heaven and then What More Can I Do? See if you can hear the melody upside down.
my blue heaven and the upside down song. What more can I do? Thank you, folks. I keep talking about Ramona, so let's do it now. It's a song that was another huge hit for Gene Austin on record. He was sure an interesting musician. He played piano. He was from Texas, but more like uh, one of the black jazz musicians. He played all on the black keys, and he sang all kinds of um, hot, jazzy tunes of the period, but a lot of his biggest hits, a lot of the material was more like uh, ballads and that kind of thing. So um, here is Ramona, and with it another tune called Janine, I Dream of Lilac Time, written for an early movie with Colleen Moore. And uh, actually I'll do uh, Janine, I Dream of Lilac Time first, and then we'll go into Ramona, which was written by a talented songstress named Mabel Wayne. understand what you mean. Can these songs be played with four hands? Any song, any song can be played that way, really. Um, you have to create your own arrangement, of course. Uh, I keep getting little blips on my Facebook uh, stream. Does anybody else see that? I hope it's not bothering anybody. Well, I've got some more songs planned for you. Uh, I don't think he's watching right now, but I have a, a new friend and fan, G Gustavo Braga, in Brazil, and uh, he asked me to play Glad Rag Doll last week, and it's a song that I play all the time, really, uh, especially at my job at the hotel here in Durango, but uh, I'll do it a little different for you tonight. 
First of all, this song was a beautiful ballad that uh, was written by Adger and Yellen, the, the great 1920s songwriters, and uh, uh, they wrote a lot of music for the movie King of Jazz, of course, but uh, this was, I'm not sure if it was written for the movie or not, but it was used uh, in a movie of the same name called Glad Rag Doll with Dolores Costello, one of the great stars of the 20s and 30s that's kind of forgotten. And there, it, the copy of the music that always turns up has Dolores Costello on the cover. But the song was revived in the 1950s by a number of artists, including Johnny Maddox, and uh, I know it was also recorded by the great pop singer Johnny Ray, who I, I love. I, I think it's great. His voice is just totally unique. So we'll do Glad Rag Doll, and I often play it with several different songs as a medley. Sometimes I do Moon Glow. I recorded it with a song from the 30s called Tormented. And tonight, we're going to do another one called True Blue Lou. And uh, this song was written for a, a talking picture in 1929 called The Dance of Life. One of the songwriters was Richard Whiting, and uh, the tune is called True Blue Lou. So here's a Glad Rag Doll and True Blue Lou. <laughs>
Thank you very much, Glad Rag Doll and True Blue Lou. I can't believe you just happened to tune in while I was playing that Gustavo. Isn't that funny? <laughs> oh, here's an odd question. Robert is asking about the song I played in my World War I medley. It's Jada, J-A-D-A. Jada, that's a very famous song. Jada, Jada, Jing, Jing, Jing. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to play that tonight. Uh, I did have a request from Harry Traxler, my friend in Ohio, for Stardust. You know, I didn't think about playing that tonight, but it really does fit the theme perfectly. So uh, let me do that for Harry. And uh, the interesting thing about Stardust is that it, it was originally written as a piano solo, a more up-tempo number uh, by Hoagy Carmichael, and then it was turned into a ballad. Mitchell Parrish wrote the lyrics for it. Uh, I think I'll try and play it both ways for you tonight. I'll start a little bit slower than usual, and then we'll do the verse and then play it as a foxtrot. Stardust.
very much. That's for Harry. So glad you uh, happened to think of that. I usually play it as a medley with some other Hoagy Carmichael tunes, but I thought it'd be fun to do it a little different tonight. Uh, I, I saw a request from Jerry and Mary Grace Lanise uh, in Kansas City. A uh, beautiful song, and I think I'll do it for you right now. It certainly fits in with ballads and waltzes I'm playing tonight. And uh, uh, these are, I'm going to do two Bing Crosby songs. <laughs> Had to think there for a minute. Uh, they're, they're both big hits for him in the early 30s, and I really don't have much music from the 30s planned for tonight, but uh, these were two enormous hits, and they're gorgeous ballads. We'll do At Your Command and Just One More Chance, which uh, were big hits for Crosby early in his career when that style of singing, that beautiful crooning, was just coming into prominence. So uh, here's, here's a little tribute to Bing Crosby, At Your Command, and just one more chance.
you very much. That goes out to Jerry and Mary Grace Lenice. Uh, thanks for the wonderful request. Incidentally, I do accept virtual tips for these concerts. If you're watching and enjoying it, I uh, sure appreciate it. I have both PayPal and Venmo, which should be in the description of the video on YouTube and Facebook, and even a P.O. box on my website for those that prefer to send checks. And, uh, uh, Patty, I saw you, you, you were tuned in. I played California Here I Come about half an hour ago. Uh, I just thought I'd go ahead and do it. If you want to you wanna hear it or your friend, just go back and watch that anyway. Now, let's see. Uh, I've got a couple more songs planned, but I could do with some more requests, folks. It has to be something that I kind of already know. And tonight, I feel like it would be nice if it fit in with the uh, theme for the concert, at least somewhat. <clears throat> yeah, Just One More Chance is one of the songs that helped put him on the map, Bing Crosby, and also Please from the big broadcast. Yep, that's exactly right. And... Well, while I wait for some more requests to come in, I'll, I'll check both, both websites here. Uh, I'll do another couple songs for you. Uh, we're going to do two songs by Irving Berlin, two beautiful waltzes, and he wrote so many gorgeous songs. Uh, I only learned this one fairly recently, sometime last year. I don't know if you've ever, if you've read the Bible, you know what the Song of Songs is, one of the books of the Bible. This is a... Uh, uh, Irving Berlin Waltz called Where is the Song of Songs for Me? <laughs> and I'll do the original verse. And uh, I have a beautiful recording of this by James Melton, who was a Metropolitan Opera star that started doing popular music in the 1930s. And uh, uh, with it, one of Berlin's most famous waltzes from the mid 20s, What'll I Do? That was, What'll I Do is about 1926, I think, and this other one is 1928. Where is the Song of Songs for me?
Thank you very much, folks. A quick tribute to Irving Berlin. And, uh, well, I've seen multiple requests uh, tonight for Deep Purple, so why don't I go ahead and play it for you. It's, uh, I guess it's a little out of the realm of what I was planning tonight, but it doesn't really matter. Um, it's not completely uh, the wrong type of tune, really. It was written as a piano solo, and words were added years later in the 30s. It's, it's certainly one of the most beautiful ballads of the 30s. Written by Peter DeRose, who was married to the ukulele lady, May Singy Breen, and the words were written by Mitchell Parrish, the same man that wrote the words to Stardust. So maybe that will honor the requests for multiple people. And uh, yeah, we'll do Deep Purple. I'm pretty sure I can play it. <laughs> Haven't done it in a while, we'll see.
there's Deep Purple, or as Johnny called it, Deep Purple. <laughs> Thank you very much. I could definitely use another request or two tonight. What else would you like, folks? I saw, I saw something I might play. Uh, what was it? Just a second. Well, I, I see some requests for Amarus, a beautiful waltz that I play sometimes. Oh, uh, if I could be with you in one hour tonight, that, that might be a little more interesting uh, choice. Uh-oh, got another request for Amarus. Okay, I'm going to have to play that. <laughs> this is a waltz. Uh, leaving, leaving the uh, theme and the idea here for the concert, really, but it's a French waltz written in 1900 and recorded uh, here in the United States about 1905 by John Philip Sousa's band, a beautiful piece called Amarus. And my recording of this was used in a Canadian TV show called Murdoch Mysteries. It's a great show if you've never seen it. And they're going to use another one of my recordings in the TV show, my piano duet recording of Dill Pickle's Rag with Frederick Hodges. That's going to be in the next season of Murdoch Mysteries. Um, anyhow, uh, for now, here's Amarus. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Amarus. 
Uh, that's as, as close as I can pronounce it. Anyhow, uh, no, Wayne, I'm not going to be on Murdoch Mysteries, but my recordings have been used on the show. They're going to be using a second one in uh, an upcoming episode of Murdoch Mysteries. So that's what I was talking about. And since I've got time, I think I will play If I Could Be With You One Hour Tonight. Uh, this is a great tune by two of the great j black jazz songwriters of the 1920s, James P. Johnson and I think Henry Creamer wrote the words. And the song has been done both up-tempo and as a ballad, so it really does fit in with uh, all the other flapper songs tonight. Amaroos is a little early for, for the flappers, it's like Amy said, but uh, anyway, uh, let me do this for you, and uh, I even know the verse. Uh, I might play it both as a ballad and then up-tempo. If I could be with you one hour tonight. so much folks that's if I could be with you one hour tonight I think I need one more request here folks <clears throat> well uh, Stevens asked me for to to Tootsie a couple of times I could throw that in because we talked about Al Jolson tonight It's funny when I announced that I was going to do a concert dedicated to waltzes and ballads. About 90% uh, of the requests that came in were real hot, jazzy numbers. <laughs> but that's, that's fine. I don't mind it. Oh, here's a request from someone named Janice. Uh, I'm in love with you, honey. Yeah, I do know that song. It's beautiful. Written... Uh, in part by Richard Whiting and a songwriter named Seymour Simons. Maybe I'll do this instead. I think this would be more appropriate than Toot Toot Tootsie. Um, uh, two songs by Seymour Simons. I had the pleasure of meeting his son and playing for his son in Detroit. And uh, he wrote a couple of big hits. We'll do All of Me and then uh, I'm in Love With You, Honey. <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you very much, everybody. There's Honey, big hit of the late 20s. I, I love that song. I'm so glad you asked for it, Janice. Um, I'm planning to end the concert tonight with something totally different, just to spice things up. And I think I'll go ahead and play that number for you now. Uh, and the only reason I'm doing this is because I wrote this myself, and I finally had copies of the sheet music printed and it's ready for sale. <laughs> this is a novelty piano solo, the kind of thing you would have heard in the 1920s. It's a little bit more like a rag, I'm, I'm not sure. And I wrote this in collaboration with a young pianist that I think the world of. His name is Andrew Sachs. Uh, he wrote the first part and I wrote the other two parts. I couldn't think of a name for a long time and finally uh, my buddy Domingo Mancuello came up with a good one. So we're calling it Finger Winks. Finger winks. It sounds just like, you know, one of those 1920s novelties, say, uh, Doll Dance, or, you know, something like that. And you can buy it off my website now. Um, I'm charging $10 for the sheet music now. I hope nobody minds that. And uh, it's adamgswanson.com. It has my middle initial in it. You can get my CDs there, too, by the way. And uh, now I have about four different pieces of sheet music for sale, and I might even have another one ready in a week or two. Vincent Johnson, who's a talented young pianist, has typeset the music for me so that it's in vintage music font. It looks exactly like something out of the original period. So, uh, in any event, for now, uh, here's Finger Winks. Thank you for tuning in so much 
everybody. Uh, yes, Gustavo, I do have the sheet music for sale on my website now. It's all ready. And uh, don't forget that next week, uh, I know there's big football games going on right now, but I'm going to go ahead and do my George Gershwin tribute. So please tune in at 6 o'clock Mountain Time uh, uh, next Sunday night, and we're going to go through the whole career of George Gershwin. I'll probably take requests, but I'm going to have to play every Gershwin song that I know anyway. And we're going to go from the early ragtime years in his career through to Rhapsody in Blue at the very end. And I'm having my piano tune just for this. And I'll even play one of Gershwin's hand-played piano rolls for you. We'll have George sitting here in the room with us. So please tune in for my George Gershwin tribute next week. And uh, thank you so much for those that watch tonight, and especially for those virtual tips. It's very, uh, very much appreciated. And uh, I'll be sending out some promotional stuff this week on the Gershwin tribute. So stay tuned, and thanks again, everybody.